Hey everyone, welcome back from writing your first Python program with the Raspberry Pi. In this lesson, the final lesson, we're going to take things up a notch and we'll be building a weather station using the Raspberry Pi as well. We'll learn how to connect a real sensor, write code to collect data and display live readings from the sensor that we can view from our personal computers as well. So let's get started. Okay, so let's quickly introduce our hardware component and connections as we did in the previous lesson. So what we'll be using today is we'll be using a sensor. This is a BME280 sensor. It comes pre-soldered. So pre-soldered means it already has these pins attached. So go ahead and buy a pre-soldered version. This sensor measures pressure, temperature, and humidity. So all the things we need for our weather station app and it pulls them very easily and there's a bunch of libraries in Python We'll be using one that pulls the values and interprets them and just prints them on or provides it to us via Via I squared C communication. So this device uses I squared C communication and what that means is we will be tech will be connecting to two pins from our Raspberry Pi to the SCL and SDA pins that will enable I squared C communication which is a very common communi communication protocol we're not going to get into the weeds of it because it's a little advanced for this course. Just know that the Raspberry Pi itself makes I squared C communication and retrieving values from devices that use I squared C communication very seamlessly. So we'll need two extra two extra connectors there to to connect to those pins. And on top of that, we'll be connecting to the VCC and the ground pin for for power and ground to complete the circuit. And that's pretty much all the sensor is. There's two extra pins here. We don't need them. We're not going to talk about them. And once you understand that, what I want you to do is I want you to take four jumper wires put them in separate rows like this so i have four jumper wires and what we're going to do is we're going to take take it in orientation like this so we have vcc ground at the top scl sda so i'm going to go ahead and flip this over and we can go ahead and push it there into the first into the first one so the first one's in red is power then ground then scl and sda and so briefly here, the, the connections on the Raspberry Pi would be that we are connecting that power pin to this first pin on the Raspberry Pi. So that's literally called pin one on the Raspberry Pi. After that, we connect the ground pin to the ground pin on the Raspberry Pi, as we did in the previous tutorial or the previous segment. This is the pin. This is the ground pin on the Raspberry Pi. You can use any ground pin on the Raspberry Pi. And finally, for the last two pins, we have this, this green pin. So this is the SDA pin on the Raspberry Pi. So that is the 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 pin right beside the power pin and then we have the sda pin so this is what goes to the sda on the bme 280 and with those four connections we should have the bme 280 powered on connected to the raspberry pi and i squared c enabled so that is the that is the simplicity of being able to connect with this bme 280 we only need four jumper wires and i hope that hardware explanation makes sense Okay, so now hopping into our Raspberry Pi once more, we're going to do something a little more involved than the first tutorial because now we actually have to install a third party package or a couple of third party packages to get this code that we're going to run today to work. And we have to enable a new setting on the Raspberry Pi. First things first, here we want to go to a, a terminal. So go ahead and just open a terminal. And so I am just going to open this. I will zoom in for you, okay. And then we just want to type in sudo raspi config. We want to enable I squared C. So we could just go to interface options and we can go to I squared C and make sure it is enabled. Would you like to arm I2C inter interface to be enabled? Yes. Okay. And now we could just click escape on our keyboard. So now we have I squared C enabled on the device. Sometimes people recommend restarting at this point, but I, I don't think you have to because I didn't and my I squared C is enabled. But if you're having issues with I squared C, one thing you could try is restarting the device. Next, we want to check the I squared C address of our BME 280 because different versions of the BME 280 have different I squared C addresses. It could be 76 or 77. So first we want to install a tool called I squared C tools. It should come with the Raspberry Pi, but I just want to make sure you have it. So you could do sudo apt. So sudo apt is the installer for the Raspberry Pi operating system that we'll be we'll be using. So it's the apt installer and sudo is just uh, sudo permissions. We're not going to get too much into that, but just know sudo apt allows you to install things on the Raspberry Pi in terms of libraries and programs and stuff. So we'll do sudo apt I squared C tools. Okay. So it looks like I already had it there. I, I don't think it installed anything. And next, what we want to do is we just want to sudo I squared C detect. And we just want to see the I squared C address of our BME 280. So if your BME 280 is plugged in, your Raspberry Pi is on and your connections are proper, you should see something like this. Mine is 76. Yours might be 77, depending on the version of the BME 280 you're using. And that'll come in hand later when I explain the code. 
Next, what we want to do is we want to update our app installer. So it's always good to update before you begin any project in terms of coding. So we could just do sudo apt update. Let's go ahead and run that. And that should update your, your app installer. So that's good. So that'll give you the latest packages and, and latest version. And next, what we want to do is we just want to install Python 3 virtual environment capabilities. So this is going to be a little confusing for some beginners. So what, we're, what we have to do is we have to create our own environment where we can install Python packages on a Raspberry Pi, and that is called a virtual environment. So we have to sudo apt install that tool, which allows us to create this concept of a virtual environment in Python. If you work with Python before, you probably know what a virtual environment is. If not, I leave it up to you, the, the viewer, to learn more about what a virtual environment is essentially is because there's a lot we can go into in terms of virtual environments and environments themselves in Python. Just know at a high level, this virtual environment allows us to actually install that third party package we need. Otherwise we can't on the Raspberry Pi or it'll be a little more difficult. So we can go ahead and just type sudo apt install and we could just do dash y and we will install Python 3 venv. So this is the virtual environment. And we'll also install pip, which is the which is the installer for packages on Python. So this is the package installer in Python, pip. If you work with Python, you probably know what pip is. It just allows you to pip install packages. So we have that, and we could just go ahead and install Python 3 just to make sure we have it. We do have it on the system from with this operating system, so it should be fun. So we do already have it. I did it off camera, so I installed those packages, but make sure you have Python 3 Ven, Python 3 pip, and Python 3. So you should have those up to this point. And after that, what we want to do is now we want to make the the weather station project so to make the weather station project let's go ahead and in this terminal we can actually navigate to a directory so let's see what directory we're, we're in we're in the base directory let's go to the desktop and let's go ahead and make a new directory we can call it we can say make dir weather station okay so this is a directory we can go ahead and cd into this directory so we're just using the command line to interact with, with the Raspberry Pi ecosystem instead of using the GUI. So it's important we, we do it this way or learn how to do it this way. So now we're in that weather station folder and now we can go ahead and create a virtual environment. Let's go ahead and create a virtual environment. And we can do this. So this is how we create our Python 3 virtual environment. So give that a moment to create. It does take a bit. Okay, so now that we have our virtual environment, we can go ahead and confirm that it's there. So we see Venv is in that folder. We can go ahead and activate our virtual environment. So you have to do this to actually use your virtual environment. So Venv bin activate. And so that activates and puts us into the virtual environment. So now we have access to it and we can install packages on the virtual environment. Now we just want to install some packages. So first we're going to install Flask. This will enable us to run a server with our Python. So this is a very popular package in Python. And we'll be using that server to essentially hit an HTTP endpoint from our local computer to access the data. So we went and installed Flask. And on top of that, we want to install the Adafruit CircuitPython BME280 library. And this will allow us to get values from the BME280 easily. Adafruit is a very popular library maker and company in this, in this realm. So you'll be seeing them a lot if you continue your journey with sensors. And I'll go ahead and install the BME280 library. Okay, so it looks like all of our packages were installed into our virtual environment. So let's go back into Genie as we did in the previous lesson and write our code, and then we'll hop back into our virtual environments in the terminal to actually run that code. Okay, so here's the code for the, the app we'll be running. You can go ahead and make a Python file and really save it wherever you like. I just saved it in the same directory as my virtual environments. You can name it whatever you like as well, and you can go ahead and just copy along what we have here. So this is just the Genie editor. We could have made this file within the terminal itself, but it just looks more clean here and easy. It's color-coded, so I just made it here, and we'll hop back into the terminal in a second. But pretty much what's happening in this code is we're just importing libraries as we did in the first or in the previous segment with the with the LED. So we just have some libraries that will allow us to do some operations. Flask for that Flask server, Adafruit BME280. So these are the most important imports here that will allow us to interact with the BME280 and show them in our web server. We also have on top of that, we have Board and Busio. So this will allow us to do the I2C communication with the BME280. And so first things first in this code, we are just starting that Flask app. Followed by that, we are just setting up the I2C communication so that's these lines right here. 
And then in line 15, what we're doing is we're just setting the sea level pressure. So you can go ahead and search sea level pressure in your area. This doesn't really matter. So what the sea level pressure does is if you do want to get your altitude from the sensor, which you can with the BME 280, we're not going to talk about that. You do want to set an accurate, an accurate sea level pressure, but really we don't need this. So you can go ahead and just set it as the value I need here. Unless later you want to work more with the sensor and get an accurate altitude, you can go ahead and Google the sea level pressure in your area and set the value here. We can just set it as this for now. So we don't want to worry too much about that. Now in this Flask app, this is what we're doing. So it's going to be a very simple app where if we go to the weather endpoint, so if we go to this endpoint on our local computer, what it'll print for us is it'll print the temperature in degrees Celsius. And I don't believe this degree actually shows in the JSON, so that's a special character. So I just, I'm, I'm just going to remove that. But yes, it'll show the temperature in degrees Celsius. It'll show the humidity and it'll show the pressure in HPA. So that's just a unit of pressure. And so these are the three three values it'll show if we hit that weather endpoint and it'll just JSONify that data. So it'll make it presentable in the in in the in Chrome when we go ahead and hit that that endpoint. And we are going to also down here. So this is just the the main. This is the main endpoint of the app. So this is the essentially the home endpoint. So if we go to the home endpoint, it's just going to show weather station, and it's going to tell us to visit the the weather endpoint to actually get the weather data. And finally, on the bottom here, this is just what runs the app. So this is all it is. Really simple Flask app. And if you've worked with Flask before, this is probably a breeze for you. If you're a beginner, this probably is a little intimidating, but just know essentially we are spinning up a server that is running and we can access the server from anywhere on our local network with the HTTP endpoints. So that is the code. You can go ahead and save it. And once it is saved, we can go ahead and run that code. I'm just going to run it from my terminal because if I run it from my terminal, I already have my virtual environment activated. So we can go ahead and make sure the app is saved there. And we could just type Python and we could do app BME280.py and it should start. Oh, so there already is another program running on port 5001. So that is interesting. So let's go ahead and see what we want to do about that. Cause I believe I ran this before. So what we can do, so we can go down to this code and we could just change the port. That is fine. So because I, I ran this previously on, on another port, it looks like that port didn't close. So let's just do port 5001 and we can go ahead and save this. So save that. Okay. Go here and we can go and run this. So that should work. Okay, so it looks like the app is running. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to hop back to our local computer, visit this endpoint, and it should show the, the app and also the weather data. Okay, so hopping back to our local computer, I just went ahead and opened Chrome, and you could just type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, which we learned how to get, followed by the port. So we're using port 5001. So I just typed enter there, and you could see it took me to the Flask app. So this is the, the app. So as we saw in the code, this is what it should show. So weather station, and it's telling me to visit forward slash weather station to see the sensor data in JSON format. So that's what it's going to do. So that JSONify in the code presented to me the data in JSON format format and you could see that it's showing the humidity, the pressure, the temperature. So that is pretty cool. And you could hit this endpoint every time to see that the values change. And one thing you could do is you could test the sensor out as well. So if you go ahead and breathe on the sensor, the humidity should increase. So let's go ahead and breathe on it here. So let's breathe on it. So I went ahead and breathed on my sensor. Let's go ahead and run this again. So the humidity should increase. So it looks like it is working. You can do other tests. You can go up and down the stairs to see if the pressure increases or decreases. So the lower you go, I believe the pressure increases. The higher you go, the pressure will decrease. And of course, you can test the temperature as well. Maybe put a heater by and see if it's responsive as well. But looks like our weather station is working and we are able to view our sensor data remotely thanks to the Flask app running on our Raspberry Pi. So there you have it. We just completed our weather station app and thus we have finished our mini course on the Raspberry Pi. I hope you sincerely enjoyed following along with me. It was a pleasure introducing you to Raspberry Pi. You wrote your first code. You learned how to interact with hardware and sensors as well. And I think you have a good understanding of what Raspberry Pi is at a high level and what it's capable of doing. So now you should have all the tools you need to continue your journey with Raspberry Pi on your own. Once again, I am Mahmoud Shilla. It was a pleasure teaching you this course. Good luck and until next time.